Let's see yours, Quagmire. Wait a second. You were born in 1948? Uh, yeah. You're 61 years old? Uh, yes, sir. What's your secret? Uh, carrots. Sometimes I grind them up into juice or just eat them raw. Or insert them anally. Long as I get them into my body somehow. Chicka -chicka. Hey, let's see yours, Joe. Nah. Come on! <sighs> Wait, why does it say, uh... Yeah, they, uh, were all out of handicap that day, so I got retarded. What's wrong with your picture? Well, see, I got drunk and then got my picture taken, so that way when I get pulled over for drunk driving, I look the same as on my license. You know, and then the copper, the copper will say, oh, you're fine, you're not drunk, this is you normal, I can tell by the picture. I wish I'd thought of that. I just got my new license a month ago. What's with the big grin? Oh, I had just gotten a new tube of Aquafresh and I was feeling cocky. Good evening. I'm Rhonda Latimer for Fox News. Here are tonight's top stories. Oh, she is just so smoking hot. God, I would do things to her that she would probably laugh at. You bitch! You know, uh, Nietzsche says we're doomed to live the same life over and over again, <clears throat> which is bad news because it means I have to sit through the ice capades again. Change it to Fox News. It's time for Rhonda Latimer. And we also want to remind you that Fox News switches to high definition starting Monday. Ah, oh, crap. Does this mean we got to get a new TV? Looks that way. Peter, when did you get that? Yeah, a few of the fellas at work talked me into it, said it was something I might need. Well, it's horrible. And the worst thing is, I found out I got it on the gay side. Hey, are you coming out tonight? I'm not gay. They put the hole in the wrong side. Ooh, can I have the box? Look at me. I'm in a rack wall vet in ten years. No, we're going to take good care of them. Well, my guest today is uh, Seth Rogen, who's got a new movie out. Now, now, Seth, this movie is hot. It's just hot, hot, hot. Uh, how does it feel to have the hottest film in Hollywood? What the fuck? Did you eat pussy backstage? Good evening, everyone, and I hope you're as thrilled about the new format change as I am. Ah! 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. We interrupt this report to inform you Rhonda Latimer has been relocated to Guantanamo Bay. Coming up, the new format that makes HD obsolete. God damn it! Hey, Mom, you should try out. I mean, you majored in journalism, and you've never done anything with it. Well, I did write for my college newspaper. Yeah, didn't you do an interview with that fast-talking FedEx guy? Yeah, I ended up dating him for three months. That's a beautiful shade of lipstick. I bet you enjoy the music of men at work. You're incredibly foxy. Take off your shirt, take off your pants. Wow, what a body. That feels good. I'll give you a call. You better get tested. Hey, Lois, a little less yakety-yak, a little more cutting up my banana. What am I supposed to do, stick the whole thing in my mouth? I mean, oh, hello. Like I was when I played that dead body on Law and Order. Well, until I got that itch in my crotch. The contusion on his left temple implies he was hit by a blunt object, and the cuts imply a struggle. So it was murder. But the question is who? Well, whoever it was wears nail polish. We found traces in the wounds. Well, that narrows it down. At least we know it wasn't the father. Yeah, but we still gotta find out. Ah. <sighs> Thank God. All right, Fox News auditions. Take one. This is the way we deliver the news on the high seas. Thirteen are dead in a subway in Paris and heavy rains flooded the east side of Pittsburgh and gas prices have hit a 14-year high and Brittany backed over her seven-month-old. I, I, I no can read these words. Hi, I'm Al Harrington of Al Harrington's Wacky Waving Inflatable Arm Flailing Tube Man Warehouse and Emporium. Due to a lack of interest in my shoddy merchandise, a soul-crushing divorce, and a never-ending custody battle, I am desperately trying to get into another line of work, and I am hoping to pass the news on to you! And even though this Iraqi veteran lost his hands, he didn't lose his ability to feel. I'm Lois Griffin for Fox News. Great story, Lois. Thanks, I just made it up. You know, I've been doing this job a long time, and I think you've got what it takes. <laughs> You're kidding, really? Yes. How would you like to be our newest on-air reporter? Here's your contract. Now run home, Lois. Run as fast as you can. Brian, come on, they're a major news network. I would think you'd be excited for me. Are you kidding? They're a lie factory. They report whatever they damn well please. You know, Brian, you're welcome to come with me and see for yourself that it's all on the level. You know, I just might take you up on that, Lois. 
And I know another way we can take advantage of this. Chris, Meg, meet me in the living room in ten minutes. Bring a pencil and paper. All right, the main duck. What's his name? I don't know. Uh, Red Hiney Monkey? <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, now what's his wacky neighbor duck's name? Giddy Goose? Meg, please try to formulate ideas clearly before you vocalize them. Names, come on now. <gasps> Poopy face tomato nose! Yes, write it down. Hurry, 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 hurry. Maybe they live in a pond? Chris, can I talk to you in the kitchen for a sec? Welcome to Fox News, Lois. We're very excited to have you. Well, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> oh, this is my dog, Brian. He was just dying to see the studio. Well, hi there, Brian. How's it going, Adolf? I'll have you know my grandparents died in the Holocaust. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. They were there, though. This is our Fox News Daycare Center. Where are all the kids? Sorry, a lot of the children aren't here today because their parents have the day off for Martin Luther King Day. Isn't that in January? Oh, no, at Fox News, we celebrate the day he was shot. Where we have the ability to monitor up to 500 different news stories in any given hour. What's that big button do? Oh, that's kind of fun. It emits a noise that only Al Gore can hear. There it is again! It's probably just wind, honey. It's not the wind! And this is the kitchen. We've got all kinds of snacks and cold drinks in here. Well, I don't see the refrigerator. Oh, we just use Ann Coulter's vagina. Hmm. There's never anything good in here. Oh, that sounds important. Who is it? Michael Moore. Oh, here we go. This is exactly what I was talking about, Lois. Fox News will take down anyone who doesn't agree with them. Well, now, wait a minute, Brian. Give him a chance. Uh, what exactly do you want me to do? We have reason to suspect that Michael Moore may be a closet homosexual. We need you to get the proof. Oh. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. Okay, I don't know. Whatever it is, it's not right on the teleprompter. There it is. We are going to do Sting, yeah. There's no words there to play us out. What does that mean, to play us out? To end the show? Yeah, yeah. All right, go, go. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I, I'll write it, and we'll do it live. Fucking thing sucks. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Stewie Griffin. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away. All right, here we go. Handy Quacks, episode one, scene one. Let's get them laughing right off the bat. Interior, Red Hiney Monkey's house. What's Red Hiney Monkey doing? Um, maybe he just got up. He's making breakfast? Eh, I don't think people eat breakfast anymore. More suggestions. Now let's take a walk down this road, see where it leads us. Dialogue, what are they saying? Um, maybe Poopy Face Tomato Nose says, uh, boy, this house of cards just doesn't want to stay up. Well, I mean, yeah, if you want to go right at it like a Neanderthal, sure, but I think we're shooting for a little more subtlety here, you know? I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that that's a real conversation when I hear it. P people don't talk like that, Meg. We're sweating and our hands are all slippery and that's, that's why, why we, we can't, can't get, get the card house to stay up. up. Thank you, Chris. We have liftoff. Ha, ha, ha. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry, but none of this stuff seems to make sense. I mean... We haven't even referenced the fact that they're ducks or that they're handicapped, but the show is called Handy Quacks. Uh-huh. Chris, can I see you in the kitchen? Yeah, in the real world, she doesn't hold up. In addition to everything else, she's got B.O. She's got B.O. Uh, still nothing. I don't understand. The lights are on. Somebody must be home. <gasps> Get down! Rush Limbaugh? What's he doing coming out of Michael Moore's house at this hour? Michael Moore is gay with Rush Limbaugh! And I just laid in dog poop. That's not dog poop. Sorry, we've been out here a long time. I have come up with a design for Red Hiney Monkey, the head of the Handy Quacks. I want only positive feedback, please. Why does he have such a big red bum? Because it's funny, Meg. People will tune into Handy Quacks each week and see that big red bum and get a big laugh out of it. Why? Because it's relatable. They'll see themselves in it. I think the design is great, Dad. Good note, good note. That kind of looks like Mom. Not finished talking, Meg. Okay, and this is Poopy Face Tomato Nose. You can see I gave him a funny little suitcase. Now, see, the joke is, most people only carry a suitcase when they're going on vacation. But Poopy Face Tomato Nose carries one all the time. And see, he's got a sleeve hanging out. He didn't pack it right. Oh, well, you know what could be funny? Maybe one week he actually goes on vacation. Chris, can I see you in the kitchen for a sec? You're writing part. No, I just feel like you and I have captured lightning in a bottle we with have. Andy Quacks. Yes. And she's just coming in, unscrewing the top, and letting it all out. Meg, your services will no longer be needed. 
And look, there's Rush Limbaugh coming out of Michael Moore's house at 2 in the morning. I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it myself. Well, your dog was right, Lois. Looks like there's no story here. Michael Moore is clearly not gay. What? No story? What are you talking about? You're the one who sent me to investigate, and now I'm showing you proof and you're dismissing it? I don't understand. The president has just confirmed a devastating surprise attack by the Japanese at Pearl Harbor. Much of our naval fleet has been destroyed, and the death toll is believed to be in the thousands. He's adorable! So they want me to drop the story completely because they don't want to embarrass Rush Limbaugh. Now do you see what I was saying about Fox News? They have an incredibly biased agenda. You should do the story anyway. You think so? Absolutely. They're hypocrites. They wanted you to do the story when they thought it would embarrass Michael Moore, but they don't want you to do it if it's going to embarrass Rush Limbaugh. Ugh. Be like sticking your arm in a backed up sink. Okay, you're right. I'm, I'm a little biased myself, but at least I'm willing to admit it. Imagine that, the two of them going at it. An oversized Armani suit and an oversized cheap windbreaker tossed casually on the floor. Look, they started this, Lois, but it's up to you to finish it. I guess you're right, Brian. Like the way Commissioner Gordon tells Batman that he just took a poop. Ugh, I don't need to know about that. Oh, darn it. Poopy face tomato nose. I know, red hiney monkey. This card house won't stay up. Probably because the wood stove is so warm. It's making our hands sweaty and slippery. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. This is it. Our vision come to life. I know. Just listen to that voice. And then picture him holding that suitcase with the sleeve sticking out. <laughs> What are you doing? I just figured I'd give Colonel Tushfinger an Australian thing. Colonel Tushfinger lives on the moon, you idiot. He talks with a moon accent. You know? He talks like this with a moon accent. You understand? I am Colonel Tushfinger and I live on the moon, so I talk like this with a moon accent. Do that! You know, Bonnie also acts. Oh, here we go. Thanks for hearing our pitch, Mr. Chernin. You realize the only reason I'm taking this meeting is that your wife is a reporter for our news division. You have absolutely no prior credits. Sir, I promise you won't regret it. Handy Quacks is going to be the next Simpsons. We fire the jokes at you like an automatic weapon of comedy. We throw a curveball joke at you, hit you right in the head, you go, wow, what happened? You're watching the show, the ducks are saying stuff, you're yucking it up, you're laughing, your sides are hurting, all of a sudden you realize you're feeling something too. When did that happen? When did the Handy Quacks become people I care about? When did they become like welcome guests in your home whose weekly visits the whole family eagerly awaits? Take a look at what we got, Peter. Why won't this card house stay up? Our palms are slippery and sweaty because of the heat from that new wood stove we just bought. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be his catchphrase. How did you afford that wood stove? Easy. I just walked into the wood stove store and said, put it on my bill. <laughs> <laughs> It's a small change, and if you do it, we'll really get behind this show. A plum? What is this, 1986? Well, if you're going to be a TV producer, you've got to be open to collaboration. So everybody just gets to stick their big chef spoon into my...